What's wrong? He broke contact. Cut contact? I didn't touch you yet. But I, I thought you wanted to make love. Is that what you call this? First sex has been proven to produce higher orders of alpha waves during digitized transference of sexual energy. All right, Oxley, what do you say we just do it the old-fashioned way? Ew, disgusting. You mean fluid transfer? I mean bony, the, the wild mambo, the, the hunk of chunk. It is no longer done. back half glass gaming down in the bunker i am joined as always by mandy hey. i've got the rev uh, i am a time lord called the reverend and nothing more than just josh just josh i am of course julian watkins the moderator sipping on a shamrock shake before they go extinct for the year everybody had liquid for breakfast but you today no nah, i did not have liquid for breakfast because liquid is not breakfast it is what you have with breakfast yeah as we had mentioned last week i'm on a little bit of a diet mm-hmm. and so mandy made fruit smoothies for breakfast so oh nice well yours is a fruit smoothie what does that make yours mine was like a spinach smoothie oh okay see my my uh partner does a lot of uh smoothies as well and i've just I've never clicked on to smoothies. I enjoy them quite a bit. Mm. They're super good. It's just, you know, my stomach has to adjust to having liquid for breakfast instead of, you know, a yeah. Subway breakfast sandwich. <laughs> you had a Subway breakfast sandwich. I did have one yesterday. We went to uh, Izzy's Ice Cream um, last weekend. I had a double scoop waffle cone and uh, Pania had a single scoop and it was $18. <laughs> Nice. It was the most expensive ice cream treat. That's Is that over by Gold Medal Park? Uh, no, the, this one was on uh, Marshall okay. in St. Paul. Mandy and I were in St. Paul recently, too. We uh, we saw the Wabasha Street Caves. Mm. Which is, it's like these old caves that they used to grow mushrooms in. And then they started built, turning it into a nightclub, hmm. like inside the cave. And right before they opened their nightclub, uh, prohibition happened. And so the police chief of St. Paul made a little deal with the mobs, like. As they've been known to do. This ended up being like this, this speakeasy and like a mob hangout and stuff. And the guy who gave us the tour dressed in like a pinstripe suit. And I was like, yeah, I'm John Dillinger saying. Yeah, as, they, as they tend to do. <laughs> and it was cool. It's a pretty short tour. It's like a half hour and it's only like six bucks a person. So it's mm. it's a really cheap, quick, fun thing to do in St. Paul. Yeah. Cheaper almost, than uh, getting ice cream. <laughs> we were looking at apartments actually right over the Wabasha Bridge. Nice area. The village people played on that bridge. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. I was in St. Paul at one at one point, and that the the whole bridge is blocked off. Mm-hmm. And they're like, the village people are playing today. It's like, huh, weird weird choice, but yeah. Because <laughs> it was it was it was like 2010. It, yeah. it, you know, if it were in like the 80s, you'd be like, oh, sure. Yeah. But like in 2010, it's like, huh. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder who chose that. <laughs> And you think by now they would just be incorporated into a city, you know, and just or the suburb people or something. Right. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I've been doing a weird thing lately on the internet, uh, possibly inspired um, by Mandy, where somebody will ask a question or we'll be talking about something, and I'll just jump right in there and start looking up historical facts. And <laughs> when was the first Skyway in downtown Minneapolis? <laughs> Oh, it's been getting out of hand. Speaking of things on the internet, uh, the Rogue One trailer has just hit yeah. the internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, trying to watch that trailer at work. It kept getting to this one part and it would just buffer and buffer and buffer and never continue further. And it was um, right uh, after the the, uh, the female character gets her orders and she's like, you know, yes, sir, or something. And they start playing this, um, w- which at the time, to me, sounded like an elephant. Like right when this music. Oh, is yeah, it, yeah. It stops. It buffers. And, I say, what? and then it just stops. I'm like, man, is that an elephant? <laughs> so I replay it, trying to reload it, pause it, let it just buffer and nothing. I cannot get past it. What? 
that part. Yeah, there's like, that's the thing for trailers now with anything with a recognizable theme. They do slow piano version yeah. of the theme and then they do blah, yeah. blah. And it's like, I've seen at least 10 trailers yeah. and it's probably the same stupid guy cutting all these trailers because oh, I imagine absolutely. there are only like three professional trailers. Absolutely. It happened with Inception when they had yeah. that blah sound effect and then every trailer after that. No, added. Jurassic World trailer is the same thing, the Jurassic World theme, like. Ghostbusters, Jurassic yeah, World. Yeah, I've heard Star of an Wars. annoying sireny sound. It's the worst. What's Stop interesting, it, though, is um, are, that sireny sound effect in the Rogue One trailer is the emergency sound effect in The Force Awakens when they're bombing the Starkiller base. The, the, there's like a large explosion and you see the guys in the cockpit. That's the emergency sound that's now then being um, repurposed as music for this trailer. I, thought, I mean, trailer I thought that was maybe. an alarm for like when they're in the Yavin base because everyone's like scrambling to their planes. and it's going It could like, be. Wah, it seems like music because it's almost got like wah. a rhythmic feel to it. I don't know why you would blare an alarm <laughs> over a trailer, but uh, they're doing it. You remember it, it, it was that like the '90s when they it, it was like the record scratch sound. They're the perfect family. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like shows like one guy like throw a pie at another guy or something. Yeah, like, then they play like some terrible rap rap generic, sound just oh, generic yeah. to show how <laughs> how cool they are. Yeah. Oh goodness. <laughs> I actually like Zack Schneider's trailers, even though he makes really bad movies. <laughs> I like all his trailers. He's so good at making trailers. You that should what? just be his job. He should switch with the Sucker other guy. Sucker Punch looked like it was going to be the coolest movie ever right. based on that trailer. And then you realize that the coolest parts of the movie, of all of his movies, are in the trailers. No, like that Watchmen trailer with the Smashing Pumpkins song. If yep. that had been a short movie, like a short Watchmen movie, yeah. it would be killer. Yeah, it's if they so would good. charge me six dollars to see that in the theater as opposed to the actual movie, I know it'd I be probably a would have been deal. in better shape coming out of it. I mean, I, I <laughs> loved that trailer, and like it wasn't yeah. a good movie. No. And I actually think Watchmen probably is not as bad as the average Jack Snyder movie. Well, I think his best movie, and I never saw it, was the um, it was an animated owl movie. Yeah, I haven't seen that. No, I was going over all of Zack Snyder's movies with Josh, and I'm like, I think there's one I'm missing. The Owls of Kahoot yeah, or something? Yeah, I have not seen that one. I saw Batman vs. Superman, by the way. I did not. It, it just was uh, you know, kind of a just a long movie. <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, that's the, how almost all of his movies feel. They're so badly paced. Yeah. I, don't even know I did see a hilarious commercial with Lil Wayne and uh, Wesley Snipes in virtual reality for, uh, what is it, the uh, Galaxy S7. And Wesley Snipes is like, man, Lil Wayne, this is incredible. And Lil Wayne's like, nah, nah, Wesley Snipes, I'm giving birth to this baby giraffe or some shit. It was like. <laughs> This is virtual reality. <laughs> my thing is, whenever I see that picture of Mark Zuckerberg walking through the room with everybody wearing VR helmets, I just think of the sex scene from Devolution Man. <laughs> 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 and I, especially when you look at that picture and see the look on Mark Zuckerberg's face, <laughs> and then you think about that. No, that was a, that was a much better movie than I felt like it had any right to be. It was a good movie. Like, it was a fun movie. Mm -hmm. For people who unfortunately Fortunately, have not seen Demolition Man. There's a sex scene where it's just two characters putting on VR helmets because that's how you have sex in the future. And then the character who's not from the future being like, what, what is this? It makes no sense. And then you got three shells, which yeah, right. it's like magnets. Right. How'd that work? <laughs> yeah, I probably could cut a break here. Veered into some VR banter. And uh, that's kind of starting to touch on the uh, premise of this episode. So... Of course, I'd like to thank uh, 2XAA and Wheelie for the music. Um, as always, you can find us on RetroVolve.com. Um, you can find us on Half Glass Gaming, which is another .com. Of course, we're on Stitcher. We're also on iTunes. You can subscribe, download, rate. Um, you can rate your downloading experience. You can download your rates. Um, <laughs> so, you know, uh, look, when we come back from the break... Uh, we're going to be talking about peripherals. All right, so we're back from the break. I'm scratching my leg, and uh, and your record. <laughs> 
<laughs> Scratch that. You know, I was watching a, a gaming historian video the other day about the Power Glove, and uh, I think they credited one of the guys working on it as having coined the phrase virtual reality. Is that true? No, it's it's actually not true. That's kind of a weird thing to, to credit to somebody. Um, the term virtual reality first appeared in a French collection of essays that was published in 1938. Hmm. But, you know, that was in French. So, But even if the guy was trying to say he coined it in English, that's not true because it was in the book The Judas Mandala, which was published in 1982. I guess, when when was the first virtual reality device created then? In the 1960s, the first virtual reality device was the Sensorama, hmm. which was created in 1962. Then there was the Sword of Damocles, which was in 1968. And were they calling those virtual reality devices? Then? Well, and multi-sensory and stuff like that. Um, Sensorama was also called an experience theater. But I mean, they probably weren't calling it virtual reality in the 60s. They were probably just calling it virtual reality, man, back then. <laughs> the Sensorama had like a bunch of short films that it would play, like... Like mm-hmm. one of them was a bike ride going through Brooklyn. So you'd go in and it looked like you were riding your bike. Through okay. Brooklyn. So they were headsets. Kind of. You, I mean, you put your head in this giant machine. <laughs> it wasn't anything yeah. little strapping at your head. It was okay. like you stick you, your head into a giant yeah. booth with a little helmet built into it. So instead of strapping a device to your head, you're literally strapping your entire body to a device. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. That's an interesting thing. So back then they were filming POV bike rides and uh yeah oh man yeah and now what the person might have been saying is that they were the first person to use virtual reality to apply to video games which might be true that could be yeah so then i guess when were the first vr devices used for gaming in the 80s uh when devices like the data glove and power glove Mm -hmm. which are the same thing just reskinned basically right but uh, were released is about the first time there was any kind of virtual reality in gaming and there were a lot of devices that Mm -hmm. cropped up around the same time and shortly after but thing the thing with the power glove though is that it was seen as like a failure but yeah, and most of those were like there's the Atari Mind Link. Yeah. If you remember that. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, it was a device that you hooked up to your head and it was supposed to read your sensory waves <laughs> and it, use that to it, control. It, that was in 1984. So it just, actually read your eyebrow motions. Yeah. So you're like, whoa, and Mario will jump. <laughs> right. Insane. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it really worked. Mm-hmm. But. <laughs> no, I, I recall uh, reading that users reported getting migraines. And oh, uh, yeah. there was the Sega Activator. Mm-hmm. Too, which was which was what? That was a full body controller that you basically stepped in a circle. Oh, of and course. it detected your movements. Yeah, and I don't think I mean I think most of these things barely worked at all. Yeah, that's a bad idea. The thing with the Power Glove though was that you know they really only had one devoted game for it um, that worked fairly well. You're th- throwing a ball in sort of like a 3D environment. Uh, yeah, I think you're talking about Super Glove Ball. But there's actually one other Power Glove game, uh, Bad Street Brawler, which was a beat 'em up. So not a not a very robust selection, but there were two games, not one. But using it to control like Zelda or Mario, I mean, why would you think that it could work? A glove, <laughs> you know? Because it looked cool. It looked cool, and it could have been cool. I mean, I think there are probably more kids who ran around pretending to do things with it than yeah. kids who actually played video games with it. That's fair. J- just the other night, I won a match by hitting someone with a power glove-assisted falcon punch. Mm-hmm. It is it is a wrestling, devastating wrestling blow. As Ty, Co- uh, Ty Cooper is as, as Ty known Cooper. to do. Uh, yes. Are you still wrestling as Ty Cooper? I, I, I am. We had that little I, bit of drama back in the... Uh, yeah. No, I'm still wrestling as Ty Cooper, and so that's fun. Cool. So, you got the Sega Activator, you got the Mind Link, which I'm still trying to... Wrap your mind around? I'm trying to link my mind. Uh. (laughs) You know, I'm trying to meld it with this idea. Um, this is a headset? These are glasses? What are the? What is the Mind Link? It's like a headband. It's a headband. It's a headband. (laughs) Yes, it would sit right... Like a a metal headband. It was pretty heavy, A metal headband. Now, that's something I could get into. As opposed to a hair metal band. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but yeah, you just put it around your head, and yeah. it's like it reads your sensory output and all that. Oh, and I mean, it just it didn't work. It's supposed to. Uh, so I then, mean, but not like a headband, like the girly type. Like it went all around your head. Of course, I'm the mask isn't headband. <laughs> we're playing video games. It's yeah. like a circlet. <laughs> I sell those things like left and right in Skyrim whenever I get those damn things. I wear them. Yeah. I'm a princess. I have to have my little tiara. Oh, okay. I, I actually have mods that add more of them in there. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> so then where does that lead us? The uh, What's next? There was uh, the Aura Interactor, which mm-hmm. I've also seen people call the farting backpack. Oh, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. It's like a big machine you strapped onto you, and it was supposed to like make you feel it if you got shot okay. in a video game. Yeah. Oh, right. But what it actually did is it sort of made a rumbling noise. Yeah. The fart sound. The basically. fart sound. It's, it's like I I didn't know it by its real name. But no, everybody called backpack. it the farting backpack because you strapped it onto you and it made farting sounds. Mm-hmm. Which can you imagine being the kid <laughs> trying to show that off to your friends? I mean, like, girl no, you like, that's just how it you sounds. Like. <laughs> Well, I mean, if you if you were it, you know trying to hold it, you could be like, no, that, that was the machine. Yeah, <laughs> hell, the machine probably works so well that it makes you fart. <laughs> <laughs> Just shakes your bowels. <laughs> I mean, it sort of makes me think of those weird weight loss products they would try to send where it just is supposed to vibrate the fat off you. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, there it goes. How is, how is that supposed to work? <laughs> Through just vibration. Give, just give them your money. That's how. So, I mean, we just saw that at the science museum, a bunch of those Yeah. Museums. They had a they had a uh, fraudulent science exhibit or like a quack, what did they call it? It was like the quack science exhibit where they showed all this like, you know, fake science from, from like the 30s and 40s and 50s. It was mm-hmm. pretty great. They had they had a bunch of those vibration machines. Yeah, I tried one at the state fair. A new one that somebody was trying to sell. <laughs> they're still they're still they're still on the vibration kick, huh? They very much are the cutting edge of the <laughs> vibration kick. They're really right there. That is cutting edge, sir. So before we touch on the scuba virtual immersion visor, because we're going to touch on that, don't worry. Um, I'm going to dive into it. The power glove. <laughs> Uh, the mind link, the activator, the interactor. For me, as a layman, okay, let's just pretend that I'm a layman, although we all know I'm an Esquire, but just pretend that I'm a layman, okay? When I think of virtual reality, you know, I think of the headset looking into a virtual world, a reality, let's say, mm-hmm. right? These things, none of these things, they're just, you're standing on something, you got a headband on, you got a fart pack, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's augmented reality. Okay. That's what it is. Yeah. Is they're making something you do in real life mm-hmm. be a part of the game. And technically, that's always true because, mm-hmm. you know, you're hitting the X button and something's right. happening. Right. But, you know, your movements... Your thoughts in the case of the mind link. Yes. Are, Your deepest uh, <laughs> desires. Are being made part of the game. So if you're taking a bullet, you know, and your backpack farts on you, mm-hmm. that's replicating the in-game experience. That's true. Okay, so we're talking more or less uh, reality augmenting. Yeah. It's not so much virtual reality. Yeah. That's not true. Exactly true. The Scuba Virtual Immersion Simulator, which was basically okay. a $300 TV that you paid to, you put on your head interesting and um, what it would do is it would cause immense neck and back pain yes yes <laughs> no it had a lot of trouble because of how painful oh it was to wear but it was 300 dollars yeah. in the 90s how much 300 okay and so you strapped it on and what it did is it would play games on the screen mm-hmm. that close to your face so not only was the tv right in your eyes but you were wearing a tv <laughs> on your head yeah. so you're in a ton of pain but you know the game was right there. It was but it was like a scuba game. It. No, no, it was it was it was a purveyor for all sorts of games. It was so just they just the called it the scuba. scuba. <laughs> I mean, none of these people knew how to name things. None clearly. of these people knew shit. I will say that. <laughs> I mean, their target demographic was probably a parent who just knows, oh, that my kid likes video games. Mm-hmm. Or like grandparent who's like, oh, they like Nintendo. Mm-hmm. They can use the Atari Mind Link with their Nintendo. You know? <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't remember as a kid ever really wanting any of those things. I think I remember the backpack thing and thinking like, oh man, like Johnny Cage, you know, I could feel that nut punch <laughs> in my house you know but other than that 
They, used, they made some uh, don't have chairs to. too. No, no. Yeah, right. The like, rumble, yeah. rumble chairs, and you don't have to go out for the feel of a nice nut punch. Exactly. You just get it right in the comfort of your own home. Yeah. Don't even have to throw on real clothes. <laughs> yeah. I could just set up a two-player match, put one controller down, and just be Johnny Cage nut punching to my heart's content. Right. Just experiencing nut punch after nut punch. But let me ask you. The Mind Link, the Activator, the Interactor, the Scuba thing. This is like mid-80s. Or early 80s to mid-90s. the crash. Oh, so it's just a constant stream. Yeah, a constant stream. And they're all attempts, I guess, at sort of bringing this concept into the mainstream. Right. Which, I think, then leads us to Nintendo with the Virtual Boy. Yeah, Nintendo is really interesting because the Virtual Boy technology was actually created in the 80s. I mean, that's maybe not surprising if you use the Virtual Boy. Yeah, but. yeah, true. Well, and the Virtual Boy was released. It wasn't a finished product. Yeah, they rushed it out. The thing with the Virtual Boy is uh, somebody named Alan Becker created it. He basically was trying to create Google Glass in the 80s, like a screen where you could view your computer display like on a plane while Mm -hmm. you were doing other things. Mm -hmm. And he did. He made it, but nobody wanted to buy it. So he was trying to sell it to businesses at first, and all of them turned it down. And then Legitimate businesses. Legitimate businesses. And then he was trying to sell it to toy companies. Like he took it to Mattel, and they turned him down. Mm -hmm. Mattel was like, we got the power glove already. (laughs) Sorry, Jack. (laughs) And so then he started started trying to sell it to video game companies and mm-hmm. Sega turned him down but Nintendo said yeah we'd like to buy that technology and so they bought this virtual reality technology and yeah. then they went to Gunpei Yukoi and were like hey ma- make something cool with this and so he did his best okay his vision for the virtual boy definitely wasn't the product that was released yeah they had to go red and black for some reason god i had one my brother has my old one there was a wario world game on there that was fantastic a fantastic wario side scroller if re-released now on you know a handheld or the, the virtual console or whatever it could be a smash hit the game was fantastic yeah it was called virtual boy at wario land um but the damn that thing was just a pain in the butt i mean it was like it had all these cautions in the booklet seizures and headaches and blindness and constipation and then it had a setting in the device itself that like every 10 minutes it would just pause to let you know hey you need to take a break you need to back off <laughs> go look at the real world for <laughs> a few minutes before your brain just there's more than two colors go yeah. look at them <laughs> Well, the really weird thing about the Virtual Boy mm-hmm. is just before it released in Japan, the Product Liability Act passed there, okay. which is just what they have all over the world where you have to put warnings and disclaimers for everything imaginable with mm-hmm. the product. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's normal. But in Japan, that had not existed. And then the Virtual Boy <laughs> comes out and they have all these insane warnings. <laughs> and so people thought it was like a death device because they'd never even yeah. seen these warnings and they weren't thinking. Well, they're only here because this this law just passed. They were thinking the virtual boy is going to kill my children. <laughs> yeah. EMF radiation concerns. I mean, okay. So I think with the virtual boy, um, at least from a design standpoint, um, it, we're starting to see a realization of what you know people are used to now is this virtual reality headset. It had a stand and it didn't strap to your head. It was supposed to. It was initially supposed to. Yeah, but to, Nintendo yeah. was worried about neck problems mm-hmm. about having to add more warning warnings to the yeah. they they, they there it was supposed to be just goggles that you could walk around with yeah there was a guy in the back he's like uh-uh, i've had that scuba visual <laughs> visor thing no it's gonna have a stand i have permanent neck damage i did play at mario tennis on yeah the virtual boy it was it was pretty fun it's reasonable no wow. I, I played it too i had a friend who had a virtual boy and like no other game console <laughs> And so I'd go over to their house wow, and be like, we have a virtual boy. And I'd always feel a little bad. Yeah. How many games ended up releasing on the virtual boy? 12 or 15 maybe. I mean. There were tw- actually 22 virtual boy games, but only 14 of them came out here. There was a water world. Was game. there? Yeah. Water world should have been on the scuba. <laughs> should have been. Should have been. The only time I ever played the Virtual Boy was when it was on demo at a store. I got it for clearance from a Blockbuster, so I mean, I got that. Well, Blockbuster a of games. had a partnership with Nintendo for the Virtual Boy. Yeah, because it's one of those things like um, in advertisement. I mean, you couldn't see what the damn thing was because you had to see it with your own eyes. Right. 
you know. No, like the Wii U. So the commercials, you have virtual boys chasing after kids and, you know, it's like, <laughs> so they were like, well, if you could rent it and try it, maybe you could get an idea for it and buy it. And- I, I've seen a video that talks about how the Wii U is really an analogous, analog- however you pronounce that Analogous? Word. Yeah. Uh, it's a good analogy. Mm-hmm. It's a good analogy uh, to the Virtual Boy and the exact situation that happened. Mm-hmm. You know, they them rushing out uh, a product that's clearly not fully ready. I mean, uh, I don't think the Wii U was necessarily rushed out. I think they were predicting the market in an incorrect way because mm-hmm. they thought tablets are becoming a big thing. People will like a video game mm-hmm. system with tablets. Plus they wanted the HD factor. Right. I think the weird part is, is that they had Mario 10 and Wario, but that's pretty much the extent of any um, recognizable Nintendo. There was properties. Mario Clash. Okay. Oh, that's right. There was a Nestor game. It was Nestor's bowling. It yeah, was yeah, Nestor no, it, it was it was Nestor from Nestor from the Nintendo mascot Power. of Nintendo Power yeah. magazine had a game. Yeah, they made a um, a remake of the original Mario Brothers in the sewer game. No, the Mario Brothers Parallax, that wasn't that super. Yeah, just the regular old you know ding dongs over there. <laughs> <laughs> But, ding uh, dong Mario never just die. Ding dong Mario. <laughs> but if they would have made something like Link's Awakening or something on that, I I just think you know what? It's so goddamn casual because of the restrictions on your brain and not wanting to damage your eyes uh, that it really couldn't have had like a really immersive long game. Or what came after the Virtual Boy? I like. I don't really have strong opinions or thoughts on VR. Mm-hmm. You're like VR, well, more like V aren't right. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mandy, but I think the virtual boy was basically it. I mean, yeah, there were there weren't a lot of attempts at home VR. There's still a lot of video game VR. Mm-hmm. I, I've done a, like at Dave and Buster's the VR there. Mm. I, mean, it, it, I, I kind of hate it, <laughs> but uh, you don't fully hate it, but. Yeah. Oh, no, I completely hate it. Okay. Well, that's the thing. They kicked me off the virtual reality machines oh at All Dave right. & Buster's Look, for, because I wasn't using them right. We're boycotting Dave & Buster's, okay? <laughs> but, no. but how are you using it? And how did they uh, want mo- you to Most it? people, you're not supposed to actually be moving like you're moving in the virtual reality, and I can't do that. Mm-hmm. So I was like doing the thing and moving all around and getting tangled up in cords, <laughs> and so they kicked me off. Uh, okay, listen, so we're not going to boycott Dave & Buster's. I they, think they, they, they were in really the right. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to limit the harm that this girl was doing. <laughs> Wailing. Dave and Buster's accidental bandit. <laughs> in fact, everybody go to Dave and Buster's double time. Uh, we'll make up for this. Are there even still Dave and Buster's? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's there's somewhere. Somewhere. Water Maple Grove. Huh. I like how you said that in a high pitched voice. <laughs> yeah, Water Maple Grove. It's <laughs> too much. Well, that's just the excitement level. He's very excited about there being a Dave and Buster's in <laughs> no, Maple we should, Grove. We should all go to Dave and Buster's. <laughs> All right, Dave half that game is out. The virtual <laughs> yeah. Because you get tickets like Chuck E. Cheese. Hmm. I think what's annoying about virtual reality is the perception of it. I think before, like the Oculus and everything sort of started to kind of come out and permeate the zeitgeist. Um, you'd see a guy in a, you know, uh, Totino's Pizza Roll commercial playing a quote unquote Call of Duty style game and he's diving over sofas and he's got a fake gun in his hand and shit. It's like, you know, honestly, you're just going to sit there. You're not moving. This whole idea of virtual reality is like you're in there and it's somehow mapping your body's movement and it knows that you're running and all this crazy shit that I think is, I, I don't understand where that came from, but it's, it's always made me kind of. Well, I mean, because okay. they don't want you to be just sitting there emotionless in a helmet because then they're going to think about demolition man <laughs> that's what it is though i mean really you might have those wands that you can kind of move the in-game hands with but i mean you don't walk 10 feet in real life and then you like you i mean you yeah, then you'd, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> but you don't do that in reality typically not that that's wrong no no i mean it is you know? wrong <laughs> David Buster's was right to kick me off, but that's my <laughs> VR experience. Okay. But I mean, when you're playing video games, like that's the idea is like, I want to sit on a couch. All right, Mandy just bought me a, a new chair. So I want to mm-hmm. sit in my new chair and I want to look at a TV and I want to hold a controller in my hand mm-hmm. and I don't want to move except for my <laughs> thumbs. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be immersed to the point of like, 
stuff's flying at my face and yeah. all that shit. Like, yeah. I, I, I just don't. Yeah. You, you had a pretty bad VR experience, didn't you? I did. I, I got to try one of the early uh, stages of the, of the Oculus Rift. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, this must have been 2012? Oh, I thought you were going to say 20 years ago. I was like, no, cow. 2012, <laughs> 2012 or 2013, uh-huh. I was at E3. It would have been 2013 because that was the last year I went to E3. And I went to go see Eve online, Mm -hmm. but like the night before Bethesda, Bethesda tends to throw a big E3 party every year. And it's usually like the Wednesday night of E3. And so there's like more E3 after their party. But um, I got completely irresponsibly drunk, ended up in (laughs) the backseat of of a pimp's SUV. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he was a nice pimp he drove me back to the hotel uh yeah it was it was a crazy night with you know me and a couple friends and we just got belligerent crazy drunk mm-hmm. we were out till like three or four in the morning and then you know got back to the hotel and had to get up at you know eight or nine or whatever to to get back to e3 mm-hmm. and so i'm sitting there completely hung over and the guys are like i think this was my first appointment of the day and the guys are just like oh yeah you know there's a little bit of a wait you know, while you're waiting, we want to show you what we've been wor- working on for the Oculus Rift. And so they put a helmet on my head. Or no, first they put on headphones on my head. And then they put a helmet over the headphones. And then my arms are flailing because I can't see anything around me. And so then they put a controller in my hands. And so I'm completely helpless. And like, this is like a space kind of dogfighting simulator Mm -hmm. that I'm playing. And you take off from like the inside of this, of some kind of like spacecraft carrier ship. And so I'm like just taking off and seeing everything moving around me. And I was like, I am going to throw up. But it was like, if I'm going to throw up, First, I have to put this controller down, which I can't see anything. So I don't know if I'm going to, like, put my controller in a toilet. Like, I don't know. I have no idea what's around me. (laughs) And so I would have to put the controller down, then get the helmet off, then get the headphones off, and then find a bathroom. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I was pretty sure I was going to throw up, like, just everywhere over, like, whoever was sitting next to me doing, doing their thing. And, like, I managed to get through it without throwing up but like vr is not for hungover people yeah and i mean typically video games are a good a good thing to do while hungover you uh-huh. know eat a bunch of hash browns and fucking play some don't starve you mm-hmm. know it's like i'm not starving i just ate a bunch of hash browns <laughs> and do not play vr games while hungover it's a bad idea yeah life lessons from josh <laughs> yeah I, I don't think i need to play a game where i'm that deep i would i would want to play a game where i'm that deep into it but i don't know that i want that to be the default Mm -hmm. like i I want to also be able to lounge and play video games but sometimes it might be fun to like actually be in the action whatever the action is scary if it was (laughs) all vr like i'm playing a freaking digimon game right now and that would be terrifying (laughs) if i was virtual reality like i'd be scared of my own digimon (laughs) no i get that (laughs) is that what i want it's 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 annoying to me to just even wear headphones while gaming for a prolonged time. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it either. I don't I like don't immersion. Wanna, yeah, I don't want sweat eyes, you know. Um, but that, I mean, that was one of the lessons that they learned with the Wii. Most people don't want to, like, act out putting a key in a keyhole and turning the well, thing. Yeah. Like, they just want to hit X. You know, hit X mm-hmm. to open the door. Mm-hmm. Like, that That works. That makes sense. It's a shortcut. Mm-hmm. Hit X to grieve. <laughs> <laughs> hit X to not throw up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you know, I can understand there's probably going to be a market. Obviously, there is a market, at least a small one right now, because everybody's just pre-ordering this shit left and right. But um, for me, I'm interested in applications, I think, perhaps other than gaming. This doesn't necessarily apply to me, but I saw uh, there was a a group that was using VR to help people cope with um, their anxieties and fears. Also, troops that were returning home from war to deal with PTSD. You know, a guy's afraid of heights, so they put him in a virtual air balloon and allows him to slowly go up higher and higher until he's more comfortable with height and 
that should bleed over into his everyday life. That's an interesting thing about video games because it's such a big uh, market right now that had they developed the Wii Mote as a medical device, mm-hmm. it would have cost them, you know, millions and millions of dollars that they wouldn't have seen a return on. Mm-hmm. Uh, because Nintendo developed the Wii Mote and sold a bajillion of them. The technology got really cheap really fast, mm-hmm. and then they actually started using, you know, Wiimote technology in in hospitals and things for mm-hmm. various uh, navigation of radiology images. Hmm. And they could, okay, I can see that. Yeah. Well, hopefully the controls are a lot more precise. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, there's other there's other uses for the technology. Like uh, there was a band I really liked. The main guy in the band was a, a student at MIT, and he kind of rewired his Wiimote controller and connected it to his guitar, mm-hmm. and he had a pedal. It was like, you know, sending sending messages to the pedal, and so based on how he was holding his guitar, based on the angle of his guitar, he could, like, raise or lower the octave of his guitar. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. It is cool. There's a DJ out there that got the uh, power glove to work as, like, a... DJ mixing tool. And I, look, I, I did the hand finger <laughs> tapping on my wrist motion for all you listeners out there. Uh, kind of immerse you in this a little bit virtual style. I can see reasons I would want to use virtual reality for like 20 minutes mm-hmm. at a Dave and Buster's or another place that wouldn't kick me out. Yeah, that would allow you. <laughs> like, I can't scuba dive because I have uh, asthma and I can't get, you can't get legally certified if you have breathing problems. Mm. But, you know, I could VR scuba dive and for mm-hmm. 20 minutes it would be super cool. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I just don't want it in my home. Well, then you should just get the scuba virtual immersion visor. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> that'll, that'll serve Certainly. No, serve you up. I mean, yeah. these days, $300, it's, <laughs> it's a steal. Get in well-defined neck muscles. Yeah. Just get ripped in the neck area. <laughs> to have a tree trunk for your neck. Like, I mean, bam! I'm sure, I'm sure that's a thing. Hmm. Yeah, that's actually a really good use for it. Yeah, virtual reality, man, you know, it's been around for a while. I think it's come into its own recently because the, the price of entry has kind of come down a bit. It's cheaper to kind of put these things together and use the technology. Um, It'll be interesting to see where it goes. I'm interested to see the fanatical opposition of like Uh. putting out PSAs where there's like uh, they have people like driving cars wearing mm-hmm. VR, like crashing their cars. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> Look at what this evil is doing to our society. I think you know you can have you know lectures for students. In the virtual space, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think non-video game wise, there are a ton of great uses for VR. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I, do, I have so little interest in mm-hmm. VR for video games. But like from a design perspective, like if you want to put together a store layout, you can do it all virtually and see how it mm-hmm. works, and then order the stuff you need. Well, how cool would it be? How it works. Um, they have you, you order the latest WWE pay per view, and they've got a camera set up in the front row capturing everything you put on your virtual headset in your home and boom you got to get everybody with a headset and so you're all watching from the same seat and then you're at least talking to each other and whacking each other in the face because you can't see (laughs) yeah but no that that would actually be really neat right to see to be able to see like any performance mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. ty cooper front row right Get smacking it, smacking down people with a power glove. Yeah, you could you could see that. Be all like Falcon Punch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. So I don't know, folks. Where are we? Are we there? Yeah, we're done. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I think we've come to um, the conclusion of another uh, exciting adventure of Half Glass Gaming. A virtual adventure. Yeah, we really immersed to the audience. Yeah. Now that VR has hit the mainstream, we're going to scuba in that stream. (laughs) (laughs) Half Glass Gaming, out. He was thanking everybody, and then he thanked the wrong person. I'm going to get back. I know they used to get back in a couple trailers.